Good day everyone. Today we will be discussing about the general account of families that come under coniferales. Let me first tell you about coniferales. They include the most dominating group of plants that belong to gymnosperms. These plants are extensively studied as they are of great economic value, immense taxonomic interest and great antiquity. That means they have a very long ancient past. Let us first of all familiarize with some of the economic importance of plants belonging to coniferates. Most of them are ornamentals and they are grown in gardens and park. Few examples are Oragaria, Thuja, Podocarpus, Taxus, etc. They are good source of soft wood which are used in making things such as archery bows, cabinets, lead pencils, wood pulp and also in various construction purposes. Conifers are effective in preventing soil erosion and also provide shelter for various wild animals. Bark of Toja yield tannin which is used in leather industry and also in the manufacture of ink. The seeds of certain species of pinus are edible. Conifers are also they yield aromatic compounds that are used as ingredients of medicine, varnish, paint and perfume. Canada balsam which is obtained from Abus balsamia. Venetian turpentine is obtained from larix. Oil of cedar is obtained from tuja. Amber is a fossilized resin of pinus. Many essential oils are also derived from coniferous plants. Let us discuss on external leaf morphology of living conifers. You can see it varies between families, genera or even species. Needle-like or unbeaned or tetragonal, tetragonal leaf sections are seen in Oracariaceae, Pinaceae, etc. Some may have linear or lanceolate and bifacially flattened leaves. Scale-like leaves are a speciality of Cupressaceae. Broad and multi-veined leaves are seen in Oracariaceae and Podocarpus. Let us discuss about the diagnostic features of families under coniferates. Oracariaceae. Leaves of this plant belonging to the family are large, spirally arranged. Scales are completely united with sporophylls. Single ovule are seen per scale leaf and it is reflexed. Number of pollen sacs range from 5 to 15. Pollen grains are unwinged. Next, cuprases. Leaves are scale-like, arranged in whorls or in opposite decussate fashion. Black scale intimately fused to oviliferous scale. We can see 3 to 20 erect ovules per scale leaf. Pollen sacs range from 3 to 6. Here also we can see unwinged pollen grains. Next let's discuss cephalotaxis. Members of this family are deciduous trees with opposite or world branches and spirally arranged leaves. Male flowers are born in globo's head and bear two pollen sacs with unwinked pollen grains. Female flowers are in pendiculated cones. Out of two ovules, only one develops into large olive-like seed. Pinus. Special needle-like leaves which are linear are spirally arranged are seen. 
Oviniferous scale are free from the Bragg scale. Each sporophyll contains two sporangia with winged pollen grains. Next family is Podocarpes. Here we can see that the leaves are linear, lanceolate or elliptical and are spirally arranged. Ovules are erect or reflexed. Microsporophylls contain two pollen sacs with two or three winged pollen grains. Next, let's, let us discuss about the family Taxis. The leaves here are spirally arranged. Here we can see that the resin canals are absent in the leaf or the wood. Tracheids are uniseriate. Tracheids, sorry, tracheids are with uniseriate pits and contain abundant tertiary spirals. They produce aerolate ovules. The microsporangiophores are peltate or scale-like and contain two to eight pollen sacs. Next, we are going to discuss about taxodes. The plant parts are spirally arranged, oviferous scales and bracts are free when young and united when mature. Ovules range from range in number from two to nine. Pollen sacs also range in number from two to nine. Pollen grains are wingless. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope this was useful.